Well, Bishop Dwayne Royster is a political activist and a self-described social change agent and agitator. At a recent rally in Washington, D.C., he said that President Trump's recently released budget proposal is a plot for, quote, ethnic cleansing. Watch. This budget, if I can be honest with you, it is an attempt to implement ethnic cleansing in this nation from people of color, but also poor white folk from whom the services being cut will be impacted the most. President Trump and his surrogates have used dog whistle language to speak about race in negative ways and create fear in the hearts of Americans. Here is the reality. Many poor black families and brown families and Asian families and indigenous families will be devastated by this budget. So we say to Donald Trump, hands off our families, hands off our health care, hands off this budget, hands off this nation, hands off. Bishop Royster joins us in the studio. Bishop, thanks for coming on. Tucker, thanks for having me on today. I was I really it. offended that you said that, and here's why. Sure. I, you know, you can disagree with the policies. I may disagree with the policies. Sure. But you were claiming you knew the motive when you don't. You're using your office, which is as a clergyman, that commands respect by definition, sure. to scare the hell out of people on the basis of something you don't know is true. And that's the definition of demagoguery. So, Tucker, thanks for having me on. I appreciate the opportunity to come in here and share and, and talk about what happened there. I think what we found in this particular budget that Donald Trump is presenting to America is offensive. I find that the budget that he has presented to us, to the American people, to be absolutely abysmal. I find the budget that he presented to America to be an absolute sin. You know, the, the, the judgment of a nation is not based on its military might. It's not based on how well it did its borders. It's based on how it took care of its least, the last, the lost, the struggling. And based on the budget that Donald Trump just presented to us just last week, he has basically had contempt for people of color. He has had contempt for people who are poor. He has had contempt for people who struggle deeply. He has had contempt for anybody that doesn't look like him. You know, I don't want to be in the position of defending a budget that I don't like in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. But it's outrageous for you to say he has contempt when you don't know that. You don't know that. It's unknowable. We can evaluate whether the policies work or not, whether we agree with them or not. We can't evaluate what he thinks because we don't know. And you cast this in racial terms. It is racial. With, how is it racial? It's absolutely racial. Doesn't this affect poor white people too? Absolutely. But, then but how is it racial? Tucker, if we were to go back and take a look at Donald Trump as candidate up through all the actions Donald Trump has made in the beginning of his uh, presidency, the actions that he has taken are very much racially motivated. They're very much motivated by faith. They're very much motivated by trying to make America white again, not just make America How great again. How the hell again. do you look at this budget and say it's ethnic cleansing? It people is ethnic believe cleansing. believe you. It is. We're talking you about taking, a minister. We're talking about taking $1.4 trillion dollars of Medicaid, making it so that people who struggle the deepest in this country are not going to be able to get the health care that we that they need. We're talking but about the taking two hundred billion. Deepest, wait a minute, so, oh, let me finish. But, They're talking about taking two hundred billion dollars away from SNAP benefits that are going to be able to help feed people in this country. We're talking about taking away ethnic, more money. Hold on, slow down. I, this, I'm this, asking this, something this very specific. Very Why is it ethnic? Because the life expectancy for black Americans is not in decline. It is in decline for working class white Americans. So presumably it hurts them worse. But that number how is, is still this, higher for white folk than how, it is for black folk in this is, country. No, no, no. no the, the reality is, is that this is racial. The dog whistle language that Donald Trump and his, his surrogates used while they were on the campaign trail is the same language that they're using to try to get this budget passed. Okay. It's the same language actually, that they're trying to use to be able to, to try to cut these programs. They're using dog whistle language that goes back to Nixon and when he was using okay. the Southern you strategy, when, look, when Ronald Reagan was using that language. I want to have a fact-based conversation. This is a fact-based conversation. Okay. When a, we look at the programs that are being cut, don't know they are going so to I'm gonna cut people some... of color. They're going to cut poor white people. And the poor white folk out there are being sold a bill of lies that this budget is going okay. to help okay. them. It's not look, going to help you're trying to overwhelm them. me with the force of your voice, I want to throw some numbers at you. Under the eight years of the Obama administration, sure. the black labor force participation rate dropped more than 2%. Black ownership how, Black home ownership down 9%. Sure. Black Americans below the poverty line up 1.5%. Real median income for black families down 1.5%, et cetera, et cetera. Gun deaths up. Number of black executives dropped 50 percent, et cetera, et cetera. So, but we so you can could look about, at that data set and say that's we, ethnic cleansing. That we, would be insane. No, first of all, the reason that most of those things happened had nothing to do with Barack Obama's leadership. It had to do with what happened the final year of George Bush's leadership when we began to fall into a recession, and that's when we began to see black you, wealth. Can I just ask you? Can I ask you that's something? When we began can to I, see look, I, I know where this argument is going to go that's because where we're you're, look, go. okay, you'll defend anything. You're standing no, in front of an abortion sign in a clerical collar. You'll defend anything. Let me let me tell you where I'm at right now. Let me ask you a question. Will you stop? Stop saying things that are irresponsible, like 
the term ethnic cleansing because you're scaring the hell out of people and making it impossible to have a rational conversation. Will you please stop doing that? No, I'm absolutely not because I'm not going to do it until we get an absolutely reasonable budget that is not targeting people who suffer the deepest in this country but why and not, not, argue and not the creating budget? a budget that puts profits over people and that really builds itself off the misery but of dark-skinned bodies in this country. why don't you say specific, rather than getting to motive and other unknowable things, why don't you say, look, if we, this, the SNAP program, for example, which you support, and I think it's fair to say we shouldn't cut this in, here's why. Instead of making gross generalizations about people's ethnicity and skin color and evoking the shared memories of persecution, which you are doing on purpose, say, look, this here's the policy. People. This is persecuting people. Maybe he just disagrees with you. Does Poor that make him evil? this country will be persecuted Do you as think a result people of this. If I We're cutting the legal services corporation so people won't even be able to have a legal defense okay. for themselves you're, in this country. You're so overstating it that here's, what, here's the problem. Here's why I think you're a bad representative for your faith. Because you don't entertain... You don't know anything about my faith. I'm saying this that a prerequisite of decency is to assume, until proved otherwise, goodwill on the part of people who disagree. The people who are reasonable and decent can have a different view from the view I have, and they're still reasonable and decent, we just disagree. You don't seem to entertain that possibility. Actually, Tucker, I did not attack Donald Trump personally. I attacked this policy. Ethnic cleansing? And I said this particular policy is about ethnic cleansing along with the Muslim ban, along with what we did at Standing, what he did at Standing Rock with executive orders, letting oil pipelines come through indigenous communities that the white communities in the same area didn't want coming through their areas. While this we look insane. at this budget, everything else there is going on There are plenty with that. of Indian reservations that have pipelines through them. Are they complicit in ethnic cleansing? Like, do you don't, how much do you if, know about this if stuff? If there are indigenous, I was in Standing Rock. So if there are indigenous folk that are saying, we don't want this coming through our land because we're concerned about it poisoning our water, then they have every right to do that. And the federal government has fair, a responsibility but it obligation mean, to listen to them and not break uh, treaties. I think that's a fair point. But what it doesn't mean, and what you need to at least admit it doesn't mean, is that anyone who disagrees is against Indians. Look, Tucker, it doesn't let, mean that. Let, let it's me, not the same as let, racism to disagree with someone. Let me I'm just, sorry. Let me just be plain with you. Ray. I hope you will. You know what? I, I, I'm reminded of John F. Kennedy, Ronald Reagan, Barack Obama talked about America being a city on a hill. And I heard Martin Luther King talk about the beloved community. And he talked about a beloved community where we battled against racism and militarism and materialism. And we created a community where people didn't see diversity as something that's evil, but instead something to be celebrated, something that we could learn from one another, something that we could use okay, to build to, one another. Okay, get to another. the point here, okay? I, my point is that this budget goes contrary to the beloved community. This budget goes okay, against being the city on the But you're making another silly hill. generalization. Look, no, this sir, is this an is adult a world generalization. with hard this decisions is an adult about world. specific this facts. Is an adult and you world. don't have any Look, specific facts. Look, if you make $30,000 a year and you have a family of four and you were trying to survive out there and all of a sudden you discover that your medical assistance and your food stamps are getting ready to get cut, how is that going to make you I think feel? that's a totally fair point. What is unfair is to call anyone who disagrees with you a racist, which is what you're doing. And it makes I said reasonable it's about cleansing. Yes. Okay. Okay. That makes I don't reasonable con I will not you want to. No, I'm and not going to your policy not to apologize because you don't want to show weakness. No, it but to, out of it decency, to do with being a prophetic you ought to be to it's not truth. prophetic, it's it irresponsible. Is prophetic. It and is. you ought to bring people together in your capacity so as a clergyman, not divided. Don't lift the Bible in my presence. I'm I'm a preacher. This is what I do. No, not here. This is what I do. Matthew twenty five, Jesus talks very clearly about you know what? I want to have a conversation about adult things how people are going to be judged. Are you saying faith is not an adult thing? Are you, are you sitting saying, here criticizing I'm saying, faith and saying it's not an adult needless thing? Needless to say. You, I'm sir, not. ought to be ashamed. All right, we got to go. We're doing that. All right. I'm not attacking faith. <laughs>